Yeah, I just want to go to the, the hospital quickly, bro, just to check it out. So after the operation, we, we stopped the guys from stealing the car. I tore my hamstring, as everyone knows, so oh, oh, I thought I tore my hamstring. Hey, Steph, rookie error number one, bro. Watch where you're running. It's a termite, man, bro, and I think I pulled my hammy. That's not a termite, man. That thing looks like a little sandy. sandy. Yeah, that's the same thing. I didn't see it. And the worst part is I tore my pen. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about Nikon, it's, it's not always just so serious and everything like that. We like to play around. We like to make jokes in the office and everything. So, JP was nice enough to take me to the hospital. So, it was... It's a good, it's a good atmosphere that's working. Yeah, my whole life I have never hurt in my, in my body, so... feels... Going through a lot of pain. But it's probably something small. Boys have to stretch me. Don't you ever look out. I'll be perfectly honest with you, but uh, I think you're a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie, that guy was pretty fast. He had some legs on him, man. I'm going to tell you something, he's the fastest guy I've ever seen in a pair of flip-flops. <laughs> uh, the suspect that Trevor was chasing uh, outran him in a pair of flip-flops. Something that Trevor's going to have to uh, think about when he's training for the next operation. And when I threw him in the car, when I felt his, when I grabbed him for by the handcuffs and by his pants and by his stomach, he had hard abs. For real, like sticking, like sticking out abs. Although I was rushing Trevor to the emergency room, <laughs> I still had time to pop in and say how's it to my wife and kids because we were going to be working late and I wasn't going to be able to see them. How was school? Good. It's good. Did you learn a lot? You're feeding the animal. Okay. Well, what were you touching, Gabs? Animals. I have a wife, Jackie, who pretty much runs the household and keeps everyone in line. She has three kids. First one is me, JP. The second kid is John Anthony, my son, and the third one is Gabriella, my little daughter. You touched the snake. Did you wash your hands? Yes. I don't, I don't snake germs up in here. <laughs> I would go to the ends of the earth to protect my family. There's uh, nothing that I wouldn't do for them. No one would ever be able to come near them. Trevor was chasing a suspect and he hit an ant hill and he tore his hamstring. The hamstring is this muscle here. Oh. And he tore it now. So we're going to take him to the hospital to check it out. Now to solve, don't ever want to tear. Yes, I was aiming for his hamstring. But he didn't cry quite as much as Trevor. <laughs> oh, that's why Trevor got big baby. I don't know, you're not asking him. <laughs> Why do you want to ask me? I'm not big baby. No. <laughs> what do you teach your children? <laughs> At JP's house is pretty cool. The kids really want attention and everything. So it's fun. It's fun playing with Auntie because he's got all the all the electronics and he's got all knives and deadly weapons and stuff. The knife throwing seat. Oh, the knife throwing seat. Oh, I thought your knife connection. The knife throwing seat. You can get it out if you like. Yeah. See, that was an eddy. Jax, I'm going to take Jeff to the hospital quick. Bye, princess. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> We finally got Trevor to the emergency room and 
um, uh, the news wasn't good. Um, we came out from seeing the doctor and we, we got some really tragic news. JP just gave me a call from the hospital. Um, he said it's not good news with Trev in the emergency. Um, when the doctors looked at him, they found a vagina. We have quite a few guys on the street that uh, are our ears and eyes and uh, sometimes they've got something valuable for us, sometimes they've got nothing, but it pays to have these guys watching out, um, you know, better the criminal you know than the one you don't. So these guys on the street, we talk to them. Sometimes we get some valuable intel out of these guys and it aids us in arresting a gang or uh, ridding the neighborhood of a potential threat. This time around, one of our informants managed to put us in touch with somebody that's connected with the, some of these gangs on the street. Now you're sending me out and you expect me to just go and operate a Trevor, clever Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got, a, we got a tip off that there's um, actually an informant contacted my brother Zane and JP. So when I got to the office, I saw JP was actually taping up Zane. It's going to be a small camera. And it's like a pinhole camera, it's just going to come through the shirt a little bit. It's actually very risky meeting an informant because you actually don't know who's watching. And there could be a hit out on that informant already because they know that the informant's a rat. I know this f***ing but apparently he runs the whole, he runs all of the streets here, so let's take him cheap. Um, I don't know what he's going to do. I'm going to be in the parking lot to see if he's got any of his cronies there. And if is heavy, I'm going to come inside the tobacco. Okay. Yeah, we'll just calm the situation down, keep him calm, get the information and get out. It's always nerve-wracking going to meet, meet an informant, especially wearing a wire. You never know what he's going to do or what's going to happen or who he's actually going to bring with him. So going to meet an informant can be the most dangerous part of the day. Yeah, sweet. Have you got your gun? No, I'll, I'll back it just now. Bro. Alex, just remember you can't trust anybody, huh? Be safe out there. Sweet. When I first walked through the door of the restaurant, I saw this big intimidating guy sitting in the corner. Um, you, you immediately have an adrenaline spike. So your heart starts pounding and your adrenaline starts racing because you never know what's going to happen. So you've always got to expect the worst and hope for the best. How's it, man? Yeah, what's up? How are you? What's cool, man? Yeah. What's going on? What the f What do you want? What information, brother? What information? information? Any information you can Are you give? a f cop or what? Not a cop, brother. Just want the information. Who sent you? Don't worry about who sent me. I've got, I've got other guys that work with me. It's all about getting paid, brother. I could see the informant was apprehensive in the beginning. Um, the problem is when these guys give out information, they never know who they're giving the information to. They could be giving them information to police and then they, they can then be arrested for collusion in these crimes. So, you know, it's, it's very important to get him to trust you to get him to know that you are part of the solution. Um, get him to know that you, you, you're his friend. On information, bro. What information? Information on, on what's going down Listen, tonight. My, my name comes with checks under. That's fine. My name comes with checks under. How much you offer? Depends on the information, brother. What do you got? What do you got to offer? I don't give a f man. I need money. I keep on telling you my name comes with, who you with? I'm with a security company. You don't look like a security person. I'm, I run a security firm with my brother. You sound like a pig. I can't trust you. Why are you laughing? You need to relax. I can't relax. You no. can't even tell me who sent you. The key to getting information from informants is to always keep the situation calm, never work the, the informant up, always let him know he's going to get paid, and let him know that the information he gives us is going to make him safe and our family safe, so it's beneficial to both parties. So let him become part of the team and not, not part of the problem. No one sent me, brother. We then operate what the f this you area. Want what the f do you want here? We want, we want to make this community safe. We want to make it safe for your family and my family. We have to work together. Man. You don't know shit about my family, man. What matter, what brother? What matters is money. Perfect. What you got? So let's make a deal. What deal? Well, tell me what you got, brother. What the f do you know about deals? You got it? Give you me an offer. What do you say? It depends what you, what you got, brother. This is 
but I don't have the whole day. I need to get the thing. What's going down tonight? You come to my turf coming and ask me what's going on tonight. They don't even say sure. Show me money. I need money. Listen, listen. Let me search you. Listen, brother, we're not I'm not going to take my I'm down. I'm down. What the f do you know about this? I'm not going to take my I keep on telling you. What kind of a show we have here? What kind of a show we have here? What kind of a show we have here? Why am I supposed to be scared? What are you going to find me? What are you going to do? I'm here now. Listen, talk to your f. Hey, yo, talk to your f. Wow. You're not f. What you going to do? What you going to do? This is for you, brother. Let's sit down and talk. Let's sit down and talk. You should have said, you should have shot that brown paper. Tell your pup. So I had to calm the situation down, defuse both of them, sat him down, gave him the money to show him that he was going to get paid, and once he got the money, he started talking. It's my brother. It doesn't look it's like my brother. your brother. My brother. Listen, my this is how this shit gonna go. It's gonna be shit today. You know what I'm saying? It's an office building. I got these niggas crazy and shit like that. Niggas wanna go out breaking. Niggas wanna go breaking. You know what I'm saying? There's no nigga wanna take laptops and shit like that. I'm not involved, man. Whatever that happens, I'm You know what I'm saying? Sure. Shit, he's the fan. I'm telling you, I'm coming for your fucking family. There's a fucking balls in this car. It's a fucking cowboy, but we got what we need. If this guy's information turns out good, we will carry on talking to him in the future. Um, in the meantime, we'd have to do our best to protect his identity so he doesn't uh, get into trouble with uh, the gangsters. My job is very physically demanding and then that is why I have to wake up and then do some exercises. I have to keep my body fit and ready for any situation. They don't call me the muscle for nothing. Uh, before I go to work today, I'm going to pass by, by a police station since I've been asked by, asked by the lady. She's a family friend, so she got a child missing, so I have to go there and do some follow-ups, see if we have the proceeding of the case. Uh, this girl, she's still 13, such a sad, sad story. I hope you're gonna find her. Dave, so what did the police say about the docket with the with your family member? Yeah, hey, it's such a sad story because um, I went there to the police station, and then I met the cops. Yeah. Ah, uh, they told me uh, what, uh, that there is no more information there. You know, Dave's hot case all the way through from work all the way home. I mean, he's a good family man. He looks after his family. His wife's happy, his children are always happy, there's no, no issues, he's never got an issue. I met them uh, maybe 2005, when, oh, when, you, when I, I came here. Okay. To, yeah, that's where we we get together, getting to know each other, oh, so shame, we started to be like a family friends. So okay, shame, so you've known them for a while in that? Yeah, it's, it's so Shame, man, but if you need yeah. anything, Dave, anything yeah. you need from us, you know we're a family, huh? Yes, yes. We yes. all stick together and we support each other. Yeah. I mean, what I want to do, I want to actually meet that investigating officer also yeah, and put please. pressure from our side and see exactly what conclusion we can get because we can't just leave it like that. But if we keep putting pressure and then we go speak to higher people also, then they'll put the pressure for us on them also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, since she's been lost, it's quiet now, uh, two weeks now. Two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. She's been lost, lost for two weeks. So keep we kept on searching what for area, her. What area did she get lost? Was she, Right, uh, right oh, around, yeah, right around Ditchloot. Uh, last time when they saw her, she was with her school friends. With the school friends in Ditchloot? Yeah, yeah, the last people to see her uh, is, is uh, uh, school friends. Yeah, but I'm sure we'll succeed. Yeah, we will, we will, we will. And let's just keep hope and keep on praying. Yeah, I know. So hoping That's for the best. I'll just keep on praying. Yes. The Lord will help us. Yeah, thank you. No pleasure, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, but we'll sort it out. Yeah, thank you. Well, let's get it.
Besides everything else I do, um, I also head up our operations. Looks like we're on a call at the moment. So I organize all the systems. I make sure that all the systems are integrated and uh, that, in general, the control room is running smoothly. Well, basically, your control room is the heart of your operation. Um, all the alarms come in there, all the footage from off-site monitoring comes in there, and your calls from your clients come into your control room. This is the old control room. Uh, it's much too small and there's not enough equipment in it. Basically, if we're setting up a, a CCTV system at a client, um, we often put in dummy cameras into certain areas so that people think they're being watched. Uh, when you deal with the expensive CCTV equipment, you've got to handle it with care, um, otherwise it breaks. Yeah, well, as you can see, it's pretty hectic in here. Clients phoning in, uh, burglary alarms going off, all that kind of thing. How's it, Lucas? I'm Olivia. I'm doing good. How are we doing here today? How are we doing good? We're doing good. Gotcha. That's what yeah. we've been busy today. Very busy. Uh, we had an attempted uh, uh, robbery that almost took place at my uh, shopping center early this morning. Uh, fortunately, our, uh, one of our election vehicles was nearby them. I had to dispatch by a couple of them, Romeo 1, Romeo 2, and Romeo 3, and the cops also went there. Then. They chased them away anyway. So, did we manage to arrest anyone? No, unfortunately, no. No, when Klaus came to me to show me actually the designs of, he actually designed it himself, the control room with the plug layout, the lights and that. I didn't know, I couldn't do that. I mean, he was a genius behind it. It must have taken him a hell of a long time. Okay, well, the new control room is going to have a lot more facilities in it. Um, in terms of off-site monitoring, it's going to be much better for us. Okay, so this is the new control room. As you can see, they're mounting the screens at the moment. Guys, you must mount those screens perfectly straight, huh? Yes. I scream a lot at the guys, um, but I take a lot of pride in my work and I'm very meticulous about it. Like you want to use your muscle today, eh? Why are you walking like this? Let me see these things. <laughs> Trevor, less talking now, more focusing, okay? Okay, We went out to do a routine patrol through an open felt. There had been numerous calls for people dumping illegal rubbish and refuse. And on this land, there's, there's normally a lot of guys that build shacks and, and stuff and get asked to move on a regular basis. Just watch out for human feces on the floor, sir. Yeah. In South Africa, illegal dumping is a huge, a huge thing for us. I mean, we've got these guys from the squatter camps that have buckies and are charging people to actually collect their rubbish but not taking it to the proper dump. And we find it a lot in, in, that open, in the open felt there. We found not only illegal dumping, but we found vagrants actually staying, staying on the open land and they're growing their own marijuana. These are marijuana plants, uh, commonly known as dacha plants in South Africa. Often these guys will come into bushveld areas like this and start a plantation. What happened was uh, I walked through the one section and I started finding little marijuana plants. Muri found a couple. Trevor found a couple. So there's a big one. I mean, it was a proper setup. There was rows and rows of dacha plants. Marijuana is completely legal in South Africa. The sale of marijuana to anyone is illegal. The problem we have in South Africa is a lot of these guys that grow this stuff, grow the outdoor marijuana just like wild in open fields and open parks and that kind of thing. I need you guys to work together with me, not to make trouble here like this, please. Are you taking your stuff? Who sleeps that side? So they've been picking their heads off here. Yeah? And, uh, there's also another one that's been picking, right? They cultivate the stuff here, then they wrap it in little newspaper balls and they sell it 10 bucks a little newspaper. You know, marijuana in certain places in the world, it's legal and those countries operate and the guys function on it. That marijuana is tested. Because it's not legal yet, there's no control on what they put on the marijuana or who they sell it to. And this creates a big problem. Where, where's your, 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 your bags? Huh? Okay, take your bag, you need to go, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I 
model. You're getting it sold at the petrol stations. Anybody's selling it. They're selling it at schools. They're selling it to kids. They managed to tap into a, a legal uh, water source here, and this is where all these guys get their water from. We burnt all that marijuana, that pile of, of dope. <coughs> I stood in you, bitch. Oh, sis, man, I told you. Uh, oh, oh, oh my word. That's wet, bro. Look. <laughs> you're going to have to get a twig in. <laughs> that is disgusting. Ten four responding. We received a call uh, to attend a, a panic or a, a alarm activation at an office park or office premises we do. Um, I was the closest one in the vicinity. Emil was also in the area. Uh, did you copy that, Mike, from Control? I did, but I didn't hear the office park's name clearly. What was it? Crest office park. Crest office park. Yes, so okay, I'm on the way. I'm proceeding, I'm proceeding. I'm actually on base, not here. 10-4, 10-4. We received a, a panic activation from uh, one of our office parks. Um, so we... <coughs> There have been gangs operating in the in the area. So we're actually on our way just to go do an inspection, make sure everything's okay. We're actually hoping to make an arrest because these guys have been terrorizing this area for a while now. I was in the car with Willie. We had a burglary signal, which was activated. Uh, nine times out of ten, there's nothing. It's just a false alarm. But we still have to take uh, stream caution. This is my first time ever responding to a situation like this, so I don't know what to expect. I was hoping it's a false alarm. This was Trevor's first robbery call. I mean, he was a bit nervous in the car. He kept asking me questions. I don't blame him because when I was going on my first one, I was also nervous. I mean, because you don't know what to expect. You've never been there. You've never seen it. You don't know what the hell's going to go on. Send your mark. ETI, what's your ETI? I'm just, just down the road. Just down the road. Copy, copy. I'm not far behind. Passing the shop, the office park on the right, I see one gate is standing open. So there's definitely some action going on there. No, rushing to the scene, the adrenaline and the blood's flying, flying through your body because you don't know what you're an interceptor. You don't know if you're rushing onto a gang with R5s that's going to just waiting to shoot the hell out of you or what. You don't know if it's a false alarm. So you don't know, so your adrenaline's rushing. turned our focus on the actual building itself. We cleared, cleared the building. We found that they ransacked the place. They'd been really moving uh, computer screens and TVs out into the quantum. We'll get them next time. We're gonna run the plates now and see where we can track this vehicle to. This is why we're taking the computers. I don't know. In the process, it takes us to just touch anything. Sweet footprints. Ninety-nine percent of the time, when storage facilities are hit, um, it is information that comes from the inside. So, a lot of the time, what happens in uh, situations such as this, uh, these suspects uh, run, flee the scene, 
but they don't disappear. Um, they hide in a bush, they wait for all the action to end, and then they come back. So it's very important that we, we search the entire premises and that we search the surrounding felt. I do believe there was some sort of information that was leaked from the inside, but this is all under investigation. Jeez, that's crazy bro, I don't think we were catching anyone. <laughs> uh, when I got up there, he was long gone. But at least I got to show my performance, being a spider monkey and all. <laughs> no, I think Chase is a bit confused about the names he calls himself. He was a cheater the other day. When we threw him up on the roof, he was a spider monkey. I got up there. Psh, psh. Then the other day, he was a bloody sloth when he was chasing that criminal. Yeah, please, can you cover the stuff back to the, back to the owner and that? How often do you guys actually catch people on the like that? Quite often. I just feel unlucky every round. A few seconds late. It's one of those things, but... Uh, I can, I can promise you these motherfuckers aren't coming back here. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we're a bit upset because we always like to make arrests, but lucky we got the taxi, so we, we've actually got a hot lead on the taxi now, so hopefully we can make a few arrests soon. And thank Lord nobody pulled the M here. I've got to hurt again. I'm always putting my body on the line, eh? Can't ever call me a <laughs> Oh, you're oh, a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? You're going to have to cut your hand off. Trevor handled himself quite well in this situation. Um, I know he was pumped, I know his heart was racing, because when I spoke to him afterwards, he told me how hectic it was. Um, I'm pretty sure that from here on in, he's gonna grow from strength to strength. He's definitely becoming a, a superb part of this team, uh, and we are a tightly knitted unit. Charlie one, Charlie one coming for Zulu one. Send him over. Uh, we need a police assistance on site here. Uh, if you send us a sector vehicle to come and take statements and all that kind of stuff, we'll be loaded with people. Yeah, do that. I'll send a vehicle. I'll send a vehicle. Over. Take them loaded with tangible one and get a reference number. Alright, we'll get a number and everything. Thank you. Tangible. I was busy with the security risk assessment in the Weinberg uh, slash Alexander uh, area. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a heavy place. This is Alexander. This is one of the toughest townships around uh, in the Johannesburg area. I was doing a full risk assessment of the site in the surrounding area. Uh, a client needed us to uh, provide him with a quotation. We're busy doing an assessment in Weinberg. A guy's got a factory and uh, he's getting robbed. Um, there's a lot of... What the... Hold on, please. Let's help this guy up. Buddy, what's up? What's up, buddy? As I stopped the car, the kid started talking to me. I didn't really understand what he was trying to say. He looked kind of shaken up. Um, the best strategy was to get him in the car quickly. Uh, it's not a very safe area. Come, 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 get in my car. It's not safe here. Uh, the kid wasn't safe, uh, to be quite frank. Neither was I safe uh, walking around that area. There's lots of... Uh, get the camera, man. Back here, the camera, camera, hop in the back here. Where did they take your car? I, I think that. Uh, hop in there, hop in there. So I put the kid in the car quickly and we just assessed what the situation was. The buddy, they, they went into, into the township there. Gonna say, we're gonna take you through to the police station. We're not gonna go chasing after these oaks right now. You're in bad shape. Yeah, this guy, this kid was a sitting duck. Uh, he was out there alone and cold with no shoes on and although his car was gone, um, they, by the time, if I didn't got there any later, he would have been naked by the time I got there. What did they hit you with the gun? Yeah, I think he just he used the back of the gun. What happened? Um, they, I was at, at a robot on the way to Basti and this guy, he came to my window and he said, he had some iPods 
Sami and had his fenders at the garage further up. And while I was distracted, he hopped into my passenger seat and, th and pulled a gun out. He was buying a stolen iPod in the suburb where he's near where he stays and uh, somebody offered him an iPod for 200 Rand. When he picked up the person, the suspect produced a firearm and uh, made him drive him to, to Alexandra. Can I just put APB out on this car, please? What kind of car was it? Yeah, it was a silver Honda Gets. Silver Honda Gets? The suspect also pistol whipped him, made him get out of the car, uh, took his shoes, his cell phone and wallet, and uh, made off with his car. Yeah. You know that our parts cost 2,000 rand, not 200 rand, eh? Uh, uh, yeah. So where do you think it comes from? You think maybe it's stolen? I, I, I didn't really ask. I just, okay. it happened so fast. I, I was, uh, you know, this is, this is life in South Africa. If you're going to be stupid enough to go buy stolen goods, um, and this happens to you really, I, I don't know if we can have any pity on you. Okay, we're on the way. We're going to take the victim to the police station. Um, just get them to start looking for that car. It's going into Alex, right here where it happened. Okay, where are your shoes? He said, he, he said once, he made me drive to there and then told me to take off my shoes and my jersey and get out the car and stop, stop walking. I don't know, I don't know why. I gave this kid a piece of my mind uh, and a little bit of a lecture. I wasn't too hard on him, but uh, you know, he needs to understand that this is not normal behavior to buy stolen goods. Do you have anybody I can call? Do you know anybody's number off my heart? Yeah, you can find my mom. Yeah, she should be able to. Yeah. I took this kid to the police station uh, where his mother met him and they went in to open a case. South Africa is a beautiful country, it's the best place in the world, but there are areas that you just don't drive with your windows open and you don't try to buy stolen stuff. Mad will come in. Send your mark, send your mark. We are holding it to the construction site. There's some kind of a dispute or something there. Just go in. Carefully. I don't know if these oaks are holding spades or picks or whatever. So, so just ride in carefully. Watch around you. The building site just off Ellendale. Yeah. Okay, I've just received a call from JP the boss that uh, the construction site a few workers that live on site that somebody's drunk in the car tassels and that. We received the call about some sort of dispute at the construction site and we were going to go check it out. So we're just coming out here to see what the situation is. We've got to be careful. I can already see guys, there's fires on the outside here. We've got to just take this quite carefully because these oaks throw bricks and either hit you with a shovel or something. So we've got to be very, very, so we're going to get in here now. We're going to see what our situation is. Let's just go see and ask them exactly what they're doing. Okay. Let's just see the answers. There's two guys on the side of the property by the construction site. We went to go see exactly who they were. We find out that there were security guards watching ESCOM's cables. Go down. Straight. Straight down. What are they guarding the cable? Cable. After checking on the two guys that were watching the cable, we proceeded to search the site to see what the reason for the panic call was. It can get very dangerous um, when you start getting the wrong element creep into uh, these uh, compounds and that. It used to be a horse one, you can see all the stables there. And eventually you just got a place overrun by criminals. There's nobody here that's not supposed to be here. Eh? It's very dangerous at night on in these construction sites and these type of environments late at night where there's no lighting. Um, you've got people that are unhappy sometimes or a criminal element hiding within. There's bricks and rocks and pieces of corrugated iron and 
somebody's going to get hit over the head sooner or later. So when you enter these situations, you enter it with uh, the ultimate respect and precaution. The construction site is a huge site with uh, hundreds of people living there. Um, we got to site and made contact with the guard who showed us quickly where the problem was. You know, there's actually lots of bricks here that we can put bricks in each other out there. We don't have a bit on our hands. This place is like a maze. So, in this corner, if you look in Kenny, you've got to make sure you check in this spot. You don't know where these guys can be hiding. If the one guy that's fighting is just a ploy, while the other guy's clean the side down. So, we have to keep our eyes open. Yes. You can't come to site and make trouble here with the bosses. Because all that's going to happen is we're going to lock you up. I want my money to go in there. No, it doesn't matter. You can speak about it. But you, go, you come in a day, you speak to him, you come and see him like a gentleman. You don't come and behave badly. Yet. As it turns out, the fight wasn't a big fight between all the workers. Luckily, it was just one foreman and a disgruntled employee. Listen, buddy, I don't want to tell you how to run your business, but you're about two seconds away from being a brick on your head, okay? And next time I'm not going to be able to help you. So you need to chill the okay? Every, every month these guys come with this and stop me. I can't, I need at least three or four more guys here at night. I can't. It's 200, 300 strong now, I can't. I understand, but you've got to learn how to suss out the situation first. You can't just go at him with the bull horns. He had a brick in his hand. You were two seconds away from getting your head smashed in. So you need to take it easy, calm down, leave it up to us. Before the dispute develops, Push the panic button, get us out here. Otherwise, what's going to happen is there's going to be a casualty. You're going to land up dead, or you're going to land up killing someone. And both ways are going to be bad for you. You can come tomorrow and come get your money tomorrow. Don't come and make trouble here. It wasn't what we expected. At least nobody got hurt. Yeah, it's been a long day for me. And then uh, I just had a call from my police contact. I hope it's a good news. Hello. Yes, uh, Constable. Sorry, uh, it's David here. Yeah, I missed your call. Uh, OK, have you ever met uh, maybe any progress about the, full, uh, the, the dead case? OK. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the good news. Uh, they just found the girl and then she's passed on. And that's so it's so sad. Oh, oh okay. Okay, please, man. Um, let me be the one to break the news to their mother because I'm so close to her and so. My mother is going to be crushed and I don't know, but I will see when I get there. Uh, guys, guys, please, please, can I have a respect on this one? I'm going to break the news from, for, for the mother. Stay away from this now. It's personal. 